Thank you to Brian for your support on Patreon. What's this move you got? Go <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Vivian and welcome back to Arches, the Echo sequel. The, uh, which one? The, yeah, yeah uh, there was like three prequels and then this is the only sequel thus far, I think. And I think there's a secret other one, possibly, I don't know. Devin sighs as he watches Artie squat down behind his jeep, taking a massive shit on the lawn, or rather examining the wheels balanced above the cracked and dusty asphalt. Shit! How'd you manage to do this? It looks like you literally drove straight off the road! Devin sighs deeply as he stands next to Cameron, practically fantasizing about getting into the beat-up sedan and escaping this hellish town! They're so close to getting out of here, and the bear just wishes he could just pick them both up and toss them in the car. Sure, you could technically do that if you wanted to, but that obviously isn't a reality. He just knows that to go against Cameron's wishes right now would be a dev would be devastating to the coyote and their relationship. And the law! You can't kidnap people. This doesn't work out. All he can do is ride this out and hope that they'll be on their way within the hour. Devin notices the silence after Artie's question, and the cat is looking up expectantly. Not wanting Cameron to be put on the spot, the bear clears his throat. We thought we saw something on the road and swerved. It was probably just a rock or something. Artie looks back at the road where they where there definitely isn't a rock. Dev sees Cameron rub an arm. Which arm? Is it his? Uh, Self-consciously out of the corner of his eye. It was in the middle of the night, so, you know, shadows and shit. Huh. Hard to imagine you have overreacting like that, Dev. Glad you guys are okay, though. Must have been rough looking at how deep that tires went. It was. Hey, how long do you need to recharge for the drive? I can take the wheel if you're too worn out. <laughs> right after you crashed your own car. It was in the middle of the night. Hey, I'm just playing, dude. Chill. Artie raises a brow at the bear, glancing at Cameron. Uh, you, you guys all right? Kind of feels like I've walked in on a fight or something. Dev massages just above his eyes with a thumb and middle finger. Oh, I'm just really tired, man. We were up most of the night. Artie then looks to Cameron, waiting for a response from the coyote. Dev tries not to bristle at the implication that, that Cameron might have a different response. Uh, yeah, we're just tired. I think walking around a little bit would do us all some good. Oh, yeah! Last time I went ghost hunting with Dev, it was real spooky. Even though we didn't see anything. <laughs> One of my top ten highs. <laughs> In fact... Uh... Highs? Artie jogs back to his car. I got some oil cartridges from the dispensary on the way here. You guys want to hit? Dev's stomach churns as he watches Artie grab a vape pen from the passenger seat. You're good at churning at the sight of a vape? No, we're good, man. I don't know if it's a good idea for you to do that and drive anyway. Are you high right now, actually? Oh, if, <laughs> if, it's, if it's just a vape, then whatever. But if it's marijuana, then yeah, you, there's definitely a problem. Nah, not will to come down by the time we're done looking around. Devin can't manage to say anything more before Artie takes a deep, long pull from the pen, a red line on the tip pulsing to life in time with the intake of his breath. How do you know if I'm good? Huh? Cameron's voice is so low, Dev almost doesn't hear it. What's that, honey? You just said we're good without even asking me. Uh, Devin doesn't know what to say anyway, because Cam just doesn't do drugs. Coyote wouldn't, the coyote would even joke that he's straight edge. Like CM Punk who returned on the, oh, whatever, I'm sorry. I just thought, 
Dev struggles for words as Artie looks at Cameron, then Devin, then back again, as he continues to hold in, hold in the vapor he inhaled. Anyway, I don't mind taking a hit, if that's okay with you, Artie. <laughs> Artie exhales loudly and puts out, holds out the pen to Cameron. Yeah, of course, dude. Dev stares incredulously, the disbelief building until he can't hold it back. Cameron, what are you doing? Artie looks at Dev with wide eyes, and Cameron only spares him a glance before plucking the pen from Artie's paw and taking a deep pull from it. Dev stares at the pulsing red light, then at Cameron's face. His eyes are closed. Dev can't tell what Cameron's thinking right now, but whatever it is, Devin knows that this isn't the behavior of the coyote he's gotten to know over the years. Echo, man, it changes you. It's juvenile, and Cameron is usually more mature than the bear when it comes to stuff like this. Okay, I'll just play along like everything's fine between you two. Either way, maybe we should just go. Dev feels his chest loosen a bit with relief at hearing those words, at hearing some sense from the other, from someone other than himself. Cameron frowns and opens his mouth. Instead of words, begins to cough explosively into his elbow, seemingly seemingly unable to catch his breath. Hey, you all right? <laughs> it, it's too long on the hit. Uh, Dev walks over to Cameron, rubbing his back. Yeah, that's normal, especially with a big hit like that. Yeah, and your weed pretty good? Okay, so it was weed. He doesn't smoke weed, dude. That's why I assumed I smoked plenty in, back in <clears throat> high school. Never hit one of these, though. <clears throat> Cameron seems to be catching his breath, finally. That's harsh as fuck. <clears throat> like, worse than a blunt. You'll get used to it. Besides, you only need to hit it a few times to get high. Should I take another, then? No, you shouldn't. Oh my god, man. Watching a fucking relationship dissolve in front of our very eyes, it's tragic. No, I should not have gum while I'm trying to fucking record something. What the fuck was I just thinking? Cameron narrows his eyes at Dev. Why are you acting like this, Dev? It's just marijuana. I never complain with you drink. Because this isn't like you at all, Cameron. Dev, Dev had been uh, holding the conversation back from becoming personal, if only because Artie is here. But at this point, he can't stop himself. He's starting to wonder if all this goes deeper than he'd like to think. In the awkward silence that follows, Artie quietly takes the pen from Cameron. Well, uh, I think one hit is good for now, especially if this is your first time smoking in a while. Uh, let's see how you feel in 20 minutes. He pauses and tilts the pen in his paw towards Devin. You sure you're good? I know we only got high together a few times, but I don't want you to feel left out. No, it's not my thing. Dev Devin looks at Cameron. You told me back in college that it wasn't your thing either. That's the only reason why I said we were good. Sorry, man. No problem. It's just been a while, so why not have a go, right? Dev sighs loudly and folds his arms, shaking his head in resignation. I guess so. Artie quietly takes another hit off the pen before tossing it back into the car. If it makes you feel better, Artie puffs out his cheeks as he lets out his uh, let out his breath. Shit's a lot safer than alcohol. Or most any drug, really. Oh, spare me, dude. I'm not in the mood for stoner talk right now. It's true, though. You know, you don't overdose on marijuana. You can get fucked up from the smoke, but that's just because it's smoke. It's nothing to do with it itself. It's true. I think it's physically impossible. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> nice. I think it's physically impossible to overdose on it, and it has many medicinal points. It's not the point, Cam. It's more mentally fucky, you know? Yeah, it makes you have great musician skills. Artie shrugs. Also, <laughs> you see someone drunk versus see someone high, which one's more likely to beat the shit out of someone unnecessarily? Definitely isn't the stoner. Depends on the person. I think Cameron's old enough to know what's good for him. 
Ooh. 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 Oh, man. There's just a lot of unlikability happening right now. Artie keeps his tone light, but Devin feels himself actually bristle at that. It's like he's being made out to be a controlling boyfriend, so the bear just looks away in frustration. Doesn't matter what the cat thinks. While Artie was a good friend in college, he didn't know all that much about Devin and Cameron's relationship or Cameron's past. The bear knows his coyote, and this isn't like Cameron at all. He just hopes that whatever it, whatever it is going on with his boyfriend will stop when they leave the town. Oh God, the lake again. Cameron stares across the lake, noticing how light, how the light blue of the water almost perfectly reflects the blue of the sky. Is that why lakes are blue? Because they're just a reflection of what's above? And that's why it becomes dark and murky when the weather is cloudy? Oh shit, that's crazy. This seemingly profound realization is what makes Cameron suddenly realize that he's very, very high. First, Cameron finds it funny, then he laughs out loud, only to stumble over nothing as his limbs suddenly feel intensely heavy. <laughs> a lot of a high is realizing you're high. <laughs> if you just don't acknowledge it, uh, and you're not used to it, you will, like, find out out of nowhere when someone else notices it, and you'll be like, Oh, shit! <laughs> Whoa. What was funny suddenly becomes somewhat alarming, and the coyote's giggles dies away almost instantly. Giggling, I should say. Ah, back to the road with the penis rock. Cameron quickly walks back to the road where Dev and Artie are, trying not to look like his legs are both 50 pounds heavier. Just a minute ago, he'd walked to the shore to put his clothes back on, and everything had been fine. Now he's in a different world. He leans back against the car, folding his arms, trying to ignore the intensifying gravity. Fuck. <laughs> He's never been this high before. His 16-year-old self would be able to handle this no problem, but the shroom trip he went on through, went through sometime during junior year had ruined most reality-distorting drugs for him. Even when he smoked the cheap, weak bud his friends provided through high school, he would still come close to freaking out. But he always had an oxy back in those days to calm himself down, or at least whatever benzo he managed to steal from his mom's medicine cabinet. Now, there's nothing between him and feeling like time and reality are completely fucked. Well, that's just the experience of being an echo, let's be honest. Permanently fucked? Like how shrooms permanently fucked his sense of self? Can we do that? Stop, 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 stop you stupid fucking idiot. Stop psyching yourself out and man the fuck up. I hate that phrase. Dev had been right, of course. What the fuck was he thinking? Well, he knows what it is he'd been thinking. While he'd made a fuss about Dev answering for him, in reality, it had been a spur-of-the-moment decision. Because when Artie offered the pen, he remembered that s remembered that seeing things always became easier when he was high. It wasn't really a positive part of being high, but if he's going to be doing the psychic shit, maybe he should experiment more with it? He feels very differently about it now. Weed seemed like a good, harmless way to test his experiment ten minutes ago, but now Cameron is questioning if weed even triggered supernatural stuff for him in the first place. He was always on the other stuff whenever he smoked weed, after all. Opioids, stimulants, dissociatives, and definitely hallucinogens like shrooms did the trick, but for obvious reasons he's never going to try those things again. Here's hoping. He just needs to relax and be aware if something happens. Oh! Oh, yeah! He's blazed! <laughs> Cameron opens his eyes, looking towards Artie in confusion. Huh? Babe, you alright? Cody looks at the bear, still confused. What's wrong? I just asked you if you're feeling okay, and you are totally spaced out! Artie, just stop freaking him out. Everything's fine, alright, Cameron? I'm f I am fine. It's you who's acting like something's wrong that's freaking me out right now. We are kind of being buzzkills, Devin. You got water? Let's get him a drink. Devin takes Cameron's paw. Sorry. Let's get water, okay, honey? Seeing Dev transition from frustrated to concerned immediately makes Cameron feel better. Doesn't look like he feels better. 
While he'd acted rebellious t to somewhat disguise his intentions, he doesn't actually want the bear to be mad at him. He'll explain to Devin later why he did this, if it actually ends up working. Just telling him right now, with Artie right, right there, would be way too complicated for his brain right now. Drugs hold a lot of baggage for him, like they would for any former addict. And Cameron doesn't doubt that Dev is not pleased in the slightest with what he's doing right now. For now, he squeezes Devin, Devin's, <laughs> Devin's, Devin's paw on his own and smiles as the bear squeezes back. Cameron giggles. <laughs> Holy shit, I've never been this high before. That was just a single mouth hit. What other fucking hits? You take weed intravenously? Oil cartridges are insane. Yeah, I swear it gets more bone every year. I'm not surprised it knocked you on your ass. Cameron vacantly watches Dev climb into the rear of the Jeep, grabbing their plastic bottles and one of the gallon jugs of water. How long is the come up? Am I going to get more high? Only if you take another hit. You wanna? Dev looks up from unpacking their food and water, biting his lip. Cameron shakes his head. Artie, fucking... I don't like Artie. No, I'm good. Just wondering. So just relax. You'll start coming. You'll start coming down within the hour. That sounds good. One time I did shrooms and I was stuck in it for eight hours. I felt like forever, like literally forever. Ugh, no thanks. That shit freaks me out. I'm not into stuff that changes you for good, you know. Yeah, it definitely changed me, and not in a good way. I mean, some people change for the better, but others just kind of end up mentally fucked up, and that was me. Oh shit, what'd it do? Just the idea that a few nasty tasting mushrooms can just change your whole entire universe makes everything feel fake, I guess. Like everything that makes us who we are, our brain signals or whatever could be so easily manipulated. You realize nothing's real, and for my friends, that was something that actually motivated them to be better people. For me, I just cared less and less. The weed is making him open up about things he normally wouldn't, and the coyote isn't sure that that's a good thing. Sure, it opened up my mind, but no one ever tells you that you can't close it when you're done. You can't ever close it. I should have listened when they told me I needed to be in a good place for it to have a good impact on me. I wasn't in a good place at all! The stress of the past day on top of remembering that traumatic event makes Cameron's eyes well up. Probably also because of the weed. Hey, dude, you okay? Uh, tears spill over and now he's truly crying. Meanwhile, Artie's just like, I don't want to deal with this. Fuck you. Despite knowing it must look ridiculous, he feels meaningful. It feels meaningful and poignant. That's a good word, poignant. A good cry. It doesn't make it any less embarrassing. Devin, with an expression both worried and exasperated, pauses in his rummaging for water and food to rub Cameron's arm and kiss the side of his head. I'm sorry. I thought this would help me see ghosts. I don't even know why I did this. I, I wasn't mad at you at all. Devin studies Cameron closely for a moment, and Cameron's blood runs cold at the thought that, for whatever reason, what he just said is fucked up enough to make Devin question why he's with this crazy canine in the first place. The dev quickly goes on as if Cameron didn't say anything. Sit down and have some water, honey. He holds up a green plastic bottle filled with water and Cameron drinks from it loudly. And food. Devin pushes a bag of jerky along with a box of cheese crackers towards Cameron. Good, the exact things you want when you're trying to hydrate. A bunch of salt. Why is Devin always so nice when he's such a dick? Thanks, Cameron. I'm sorry I'm such a piece of shit. What? Honey, where'd that come from? I know that's something you wouldn't say, but I'd rather you tell me when I'm being awful. I don't want to go back to the way I was. It's quiet for a moment. Wow. This got you that fucked up, huh? That's all you gotta say, Artie? Yeah, Artie's... Fuck you, Artie. Dev doesn't sound angry at Artie anymore, much to Cameron's relief. I'm angry at Artie for him. Which 
just very tired. Still, this is all pretty standard stuff, especially when you got low tolerance. And I'm not trying to be a dick when I say that, I'm actually a little jealous. Correct me if I'm wrong, Cam, but it looks cathartic as hell. You're not being a dick. It's just not a smart thing to say right now, Arturo. Art's right. Are you really in touch with my feelings right now? And Cameron Absent mindedly shoves a cracker into his muzzle and stops. The salty, savory flavor is so satisfying he has to use all of his focus to appreciate it. Fuck, that's good. Arturo laughs. Cameron shoves a strip of jerky that lightly seasoned with hot sauce into his mouth, combining the flavors, and he moans again. Devin sighs in a defeated but accepting sort of way. That makes Cam feel even better. And even though he did something stupid, Devin seems to understand. Hey, let me in on some of that. All right, but eat slow. This food is for survival, not for your munchies. We'll be out of here by noon, Dev. Relax. Fuck you. Devin sighs as he leans up against the tailgate, covering his face with his paws, then grunts with annoyance as he has to move to let Artie by. Trust me, I'm trying. Oy vey. Oh, look at- oh. Oom. Oh my god, their eyes. This is bad. This is very bad. Dude, I'm totally on Devin's side here. Like, there, there isn't a part of me that isn't, like... D D Artie is just fucking things up and being way too pushy and not taking any consideration for other people into account. When, you know, like... And, of course, Cameron is all kinds of fucked up. He's being brutalized mentally by the hum and making stupid decisions. Why, well, meanwhile, Devin is probably dealing with an alternate version of that, but still, god damn it. God damn these two in the front. Seeming to disregard Devin's advice to take it slow, Artie starts cramming jerky into his muzzle, moaning like Cameron. Fuck you! Mm, snacks are so much better when you're high versus, like, an actual meal, you know? Cameron doesn't know, but nods enthusiastically. I can't believe this. Devin's tone is actually a, one of actual disbelief. I can't believe this! You know, something like that. Arturo glances lazily at Cameron. Fuck you. Just fuck you. The line is, is Devin being a fucking, not fucking dignifying it with saying it about every new thing, everything a new thing, or have you been putting up with this for a while? It's weird after knowing how he acted in college. Fucking really? This is this is pissing me off. Cameron leans against the tailgate, smiling at Devin. I've been doing some dangerous shit during our investigation, and Dev is just trying to keep us safe. He's wonderful, and I love him. Okay, good answer. Devin looks at him and just gives him a small smile without saying anything. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, you gonna let me in on what's going on between you two? Because I think we can all admit it's been super awkward so far. Because of you, numbnut! If you recognize something's going on, you don't keep fucking poking it! Fucking idiot! Hasn't it, though? This must be fucking weird for you. For him! Oh yeah, you give a shit about him! Fuck this guy! They both laugh, and the obnoxious snorts that Cameron makes only make him makes him sound snort louder. It's just not really something that you need to know about. I know it sounds rude, but I'm psychic. I'm getting I'm getting like actually pissed. Dev's eyes widen and Cameron doesn't help to fill the silence that follows. Huh. Like you can see the future, or...? I can see ghosts. Or maybe the future. I don't really know how it works. I'm, just, I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> Cameron hadn't really given it much thought, but seeing the future seemed to be part of it. No, it's seeing the past. But if you're too high, you probably can't tell the difference between the two. Dude, that's fucking awesome! 
Devin shifts around and Cameron can tell he's not exactly happy about him talking to Artie about this. He has to wonder why. Is it gonna stop you? Guess not. Shit, I think my aunt was super psychic. Super psychic? As opposed to what sort of psychic? No, she had like tarot cards and shit that told half my siblings that they were up to some shady shit that the cartel was gonna disappear them. Wait, did they get disappeared? I mean, one died during routine surgery, but the cartel wasn't involved. As far as I know. <laughs> That's so sad, I don't know why I laughed. It's cool, I get it. So not really psychic, or at least not like himself. It feels wrong to him, but Cameron feels almost dismissive of anyone that doesn't see things like he does, like he does. Oh man. He's different, in a good way. And for once, he feels like he can admit that. God damn it. God damn it, this is infuriating. He had seen his friend's death a few months before it happened. And he had dreams that were so accurate to the future that it almost seemed like deja vu. I want to go for a walk. Everything looks pretty neat right now. Dope! Let's go see some ghosts! Devin sighs heavily again, but helps Cameron down from the trunk. And the coyote leaning against him as they start walking. At this point, Devin had resigned himself to the fact that Cameron is going to do what he wants. And all Devin can do is respect his decision. No, you don't. You don't. That's, there's more you can do. While Artie reminding him more than once that Cameron is an adult had been annoying, it's also true that Devin has no right to take that decision away from Cameron. When it comes at the cost of his safety, it kind of does. Still, there's a part of him that's hurt that Cameron would disregard his own feelings on the matter. Especially after opening up to him by the lake. But Devin also disregarded Cameron's feelings. But Devin also disregarded Cameron's feelings when bringing, bringing him here, at least to an extent. An extent that the bear had thought was reasonable. That's not the same thing. Now it seems he's reaping what he sowed. Still, Devin remembers and brings up something that should keep them from venturing too far into the town. We should only go as far as to the motel. Cam and I had a brush in with some gun toting redneck near the other side of town last night. Whoa, really? Cameron giggles. One yelled at us from really far away, and Devin's already got a gnarly cramp in his thigh. Again, he had a shotgun. Doesn't that bother you guys? Artie? Artie shrugs. This is what he said. Meh, I've had guys flash their guns at me on the road because I flipped them off every time. Every one of them was too chicken shit to shoot, and this was even when I flew the old Azul Blanco on my car. I don't know what that means. Well, luckily for you, people here don't even know what that is. I don't, sorry. No, if I were to mount a Sonoran flag, I don't know what Sonoran... Now, if I were to mount a Sonoran flag on my jeep, I'll also flip in the bird. Anyway, I say we stick around this area no further than the motel. You should be more careful, though, Artie. I swear I hear a road rage story every few months where someone gets shot. Honestly, Cam, if that's my fork in the road, I say let it happen. You gotta live, and if that involves getting shot on the freeway because you made fun of someone's driving, then so be it. Fuck you! Really? This is the motherfucker you're letting- No! At this point, just pay the fucking fare to get a goddamn Uber from a million miles away! This is ridiculous. This is such an unlikable person. Is it really a fork in the road if the other option is death? Yeah, one of the roads just leads to a dead end or something. I don't know, I'm high as hell right now. I think the metaphor is more appropriate for longer-term consequences, though. 
Devin just smirks at the meaningless banter. Meaningless, right, meaningless. Meaningless banter about uh, fork in the road metaphors that must seem so profound to them right now. You know, my mom always talks about her fork in the road being in the fifth grade, and it led to her having a shitty life. Seems kind of young to have a decision like that come up. I think she just likes to be able to point at a moment everything went wrong, but anyway, they'd been hyping up this space shuttle launch for months, and she decided she was going to be an astronaut. She went to the public library for the first time in her life to check out books about astrophysics and stuff. Dev suddenly has a good idea of where this is going. Then, while the whole class was watching the liftoff live on TV, it exploded. The Challenger. And whoa! What the fuck? What the hell is this? What the fuck? Um. Hello? Okay, just some fucking thing popped up. I've never seen that screen before on my computer. That was fucking weird, but everything seems to still be here, so I guess we're good. Anyway. Even though her teacher turned it off and went about the day like nothing happened, they all knew those astronauts were dead. It made her question all her plans, and she drifted through life after that, not knowing what she wanted to do, wanted to be anymore. Damn. That's fucked up, man. Do you know why that happened, by the way? Yeah, it was people not taking care and taking the proper precautions, and it was like frost on some of the fucking small little bits that didn't make them seal properly. Cameron gives Dev a confused look, and so does Artie, like they forgot he's even there. Yeah, that's nice, assholes. Why my mom didn't know what to do? It's because she watched clips of smiling, waving astronauts getting on a space shuttle that then exploded on live, live on TV, Devin. Devin sighs, realizing he needs to make things more clear for his high version of Cameron. No, I mean, why that space shuttle exploded? Uh, because rockets and fuel can cause explosions, right? No, well, yeah, but mainly, Dev refocuses his train of thought. It's because they didn't listen to their engineers. You know, the people that stand between you and a pancake shopping mall, or a freeway bridge collapsing during rush hour, or an exploding space shuttle. Dev raises his brows meaningfully at Cameron, though weirdly enough, he realizes that he's mainly talking to himself. Always listen to your engineer. His half-assed attempt at making the conversation about listening to his advice quickly backfires, though. Well, if those engineers were like the ones at Pueblo, I'm willing to bet the more people would have listened to them if they didn't act like such know-it-all pricks. This is, this is pissing me off to such a point that I'm not even getting, like, th th in wrestling, there's a term called go-away heat. Now, regular heat is when you got, like, a bad guy in wrestling, a heel that's doing something to make the crowd not like them. That's regular heat. Go-away heat is when a bad guy in wrestling is doing something that makes the crowd not want them on the show. They don't want to pay to watch someone get their ass beat, like in a wrestling match. They just don't want to pay to watch the show. So you want to avoid go-away heat. This motherfucker's got go-away heat with me. I'm tired of this shit. Everything he fucking says is some smart aleck dismissive bullshit that's just almost deliberately dismissing everything and is going completely in the wrong direction for no good fucking reason. I'm tired of it. I'm fucking tired of it. Someone's still sore from having to drop out of their major. Fuck you too. Fuck you! Fuck you and your stupid combed hair! Hey, come on guys, we're feeling good right now. No, we're not! You know, Artie, I've dated an engineer for five years now. They gotta talk down to you to do their job. You know, at some point you gotta ask the question, is it still worth fucking putting up with? Cameron walks against Devin and playfully nudges him with a shoulder. 
Even though Cameron is playing along with what Devin started, hearing his boyfriend say that actually stings a little bit. Rightfully so. Babe, I don't talk down to you. I don't mean to, anyway. Arturo makes a face, and Dev does his best to pretend like he did, doesn't see it. Hey, I'm just kidding. I agree with you. If people let disasters happen because they're too proud to listen to experts, then fuck them. Maybe if they had, my mom would, would be on the space station right now. I agree with the sentiment. Too many people think they know better than literal fucking experts because they saw some shit on a fucked up website somewhere. But also fuck Artie for making that fucking face. Maybe. Mistakes happen, though. They remind us to keep our guard up because it always slips eventually, you know? I think I do. Dev smiles, pleasantly surprised that Cameron seems to be heeding his advice to be careful. Back at the motel, here we are again. For the first time in a day, he finds himself st starting to relax a little. The end of this bizarre nightmare is in sight. They're already starting to circle back around to the car. You know, it's kind of amazing to think about how you two are still together. Why the fuck is that amazing? Are you, are, if he does fucking anything to try to split them up intentionally, like he's already doing enough unintentionally, but if he goes intentionally at this point, then I'm, I'm, I'm going to be fucking, I, I don't know that I want to fucking keep playing this. That brings Dev out of his reverie rather quickly. Why is that? Well, all our other friends didn't last more than a few years out of college. And if you think about it, you and Cam are probably the biggest opposites out of all those relationships. What? I think the most important thing in a relationship is getting along. If you can do that for 99% of the time, you're probably set. That and having different hobbies and spending time apart adds to a healthy relationship. And you sometimes you sound like a self-help relationship book or something. Maybe that's why. Knowing what they're talking about? Fucking. I think it's just that we are both reasonable people. That's usually all you need. Well, I'm really happy it all worked out. Especially after your first relationship. Honestly, looking back, I was basically betting Cam. Basically setting Cam up to be your rebound. This is inappropriate, and not at all helpful. Shut up, asshole! I wasn't really meaning to, of course. You know, I forgot how you m somehow managed to always say the wrong thing at the wrong time, Artie. Oh yeah, how? Somehow he manages to do it. Totally isn't trying to. Well, it has been a long time, so I'm interested. I just wonder who you were with before me. All you've said is that they were like a month-long fling. Artie seems to take this as a go-ahead to reveal irrelevant and embarrassing information about Dev's previous love life. That is not okay! God damn it. This, this is fucking obnoxious. This is obnoxious! He was a fox, named uh, Jesus, right, Devin? I never brought him up because the relationship literally lasted two months. A uh, fox, huh? Cameron says it like in a contemplative way, in a way that makes Dev uneasy, even though the coyote is probably just truly curious. Well, yeah, it was short, but when he dumped Dev, like, he went the full chick flick route and laid in bed for a week eating ice cream. I was so worried about him that I set the two of you up. I'm, I'm gonna have a hard time playing this game again in the future. Just because I'm remembering how pissed off I'm getting. Devin's muzzle burns under the fur, even hotter than the heat of the desert. Why did I ever tell you anything in confidence? Well, it's more like I saw it. Like the entire dorm did. Is that true, Devin? To Devin's dismay, Cameron sounds genuinely interested now, combined with a genuine degree of concern. You seem so put together when I first met you. Dev avoids answering. It wasn't you that set us up. You mentioned me to your girlfriend's friend, who happened to be Cameron's friend. She set us up. 
Yeah, yeah, you can word it how you like, but if I didn't remember them mentioning the super hot guitar coyote, too bad he's gay, dude, who knows where you'd be right now? I love these games. I severely love these games. This character is damn near making me want to quit. Ah, yeah, that's me. And less than a week later, I knew it worked because I walked in on the two of you fucking. Come on! Shut the fuck up and get the goddamn fuck out of town! Can we get on with the plot instead of just realizing how big a piece of shit this guy is? Oh god, why are you bringing that up? Yeah, why? Because it was funny! Besides, I walked in on like a dozen people doing it at some point. Maybe stop walking into rooms unsolicited. Hell, back when the university library was open 24-7, you had a 50-50 chance of walking in on a pair of rats going getting hit on at 2 a.m. Arturo prattles on to Cameron while Devin sulks behind a bit. The bear finds himself wishing he had been the one to tell Cameron about all of that. The way Artie described it made him sound unstable in a way. The fox had been cute, but Devin never really got to know him before Jesus abruptly broke it off. When he first met Cameron, on the other hand, he was cute and hot, especially with his guitar and voice. And that was just the surface stuff. Cameron was also nice, and considerate, and thoughtful, and complex in ways that the bear is still trying to fully understand. Devin had girlfriends in high school so people wouldn't get suspicious, but the fox had been what he considered his first real relationship, and he simply overreacted to his first real breakup. Looking back at his 19-year-old self, it's hard to understand why it had felt like the end of the world. Cameron. If Cameron were to disappear from his life now, it would be the end of the world. The world that he knows, at least. Maybe if for some terrible reason it did come to an end. He would look back on ten year, look back ten years from now and think the same about his 25-year-old self. But he doubts that. Five years is a long time. He plans to spend the rest of his life with Cameron. Unlike that fling in college, losing Cameron would be a traumatic, life-changing disaster. Just thinking about it now makes his throat tighten. The abyss he'd felt below his feet since he was 12, that emotional scar left over from his last traumatic event in his life, seems to yawn a bit wider. The bear thinks back to the point he'd been trying to make about engineers helping to avoid cat catastrophic failures and why it had felt like he'd been talking to himself. There's a moment in which recovery is impossible where a chain reaction of small disasters are set off that then mushroom into a tragedy. Maybe he'd been reminding himself of what could happen. Or maybe he's realizing something that's already happened. Why does it feel like he's already past that point? The point where he made a decision at a literal fork that set in motion a cascade of failures. There's no reason for him to feel that way, considering they're minutes away from leaving, but... Feels hopeless now. He ignored all the signs and he turned right. Ignored all the signs. Just like all those officials who ignored signs from their department stores, bridges, dams, and spaceships. At least until everything fell apart. Time passes quickly, and bantering with Artie and Devon had made Cameron forget what he was trying to do in the first place. He wonders if maybe that had been Devon's goal. He should be keeping his mind open, not covering up potential spirits with loud, obnoxious laughs as they reminisce about their college days. Because right now, he's feeling something. Something strange that he can't explain. Alright, ready to head out? Man, we didn't even get to find anything scary. You don't look for scary things. You let them happen, and nothing happens, so... Cameron can't leave now. Hey, Dev, please don't be mad at me. Dev didn't say anything, and that makes Cameron squirm. Oh, you two guys gonna fight again? 
Shut up, you fuckass. Can I have five minutes alone, please? No. Just five minutes, I swear, and we'll be done. Cameron. I can feel something. I don't know what, but you guys are making it hard to hear. Cameron, the motel is right there. I'm not leaving you here. Dev's tone is so resolute, so unshaken, that Cameron shrinks into himself, realizing that he's reached Dev's limit. Hardy clears his throat. Not to butt in, but how about this? Me and Dev stand at the end of the road over there so we can see you, and we can make sure nothing bad happens. No! How about you shut the fuck up and stay out of their goddamn business? Please, Dev. I just really need to figure something out, and it's going to bother me forever if I don't. Please. Dev is clearly taken aback by Cameron's intensity, which had been Cameron's intention. Something is wrong, and he needs to confirm it. Is... is what you're doing safe? Could it hurt you? I don't know. I don't think so. It has more to do with me than ghosts, though. Dev doesn't say anything for several seconds, seeming to be weighing multiple scenarios in his head. Okay. We'll be up the road. Please be careful and yell if you need us. Okay. Thank you. Dev kisses Cameron on the head for a long moment before walking away up the road. Artie looks back and forth, confused, before following Dev. Alone now, Cameron can tell that something is definitely different. He can't put his finger on it, but it's not just him being residually high. It's almost like he can see more clearly. Like he can see more. Meaning in nothing. Cameron isn't sure what to think about this. The weed is making it happen, though. Just like he hoped it would. But it's weak. He can hear the voices of those who have passed just barely playing along with the wind for just a fraction of a second. He thinks of trying opioids just once more and how that would truly help him see things. Oh my god! This, this this is what the hum does. It brings out your worst traits in an attempt to make you think that you're doing something good. Thought leaves him feeling physically repulsed to the point that he almost wretches. Visceral, yeah, visceral reactions, surprising even him. Uh-oh, it just got darker. Three years of substance abuse, the death of his mother, the deaths of his friends... He vividly remembers those two weeks when he quit cold turkey, hiding away in his friend's basement in a pool of sweat, shaking, having every bathroom issue possible, when it ripped through his fur and skin, to run into the street, to run into a car. He cried constantly. He hated himself. He was worthless. He needed to die. He had to die. But at the end of those two weeks, he made it. It was hard, but like his friends would always tell him, withdrawals aren't the hard part. The hard part is finding pills in a friend, or a relative's medicine cabinet, months, even years later. The hard part is crushing off those pills and a neat little lines of powder staring at them, telling yourself that you don't need it. You don't have to do it, but you do it. You always do it. No matter how many times you get clean, someone like Cameron needed something else to keep him clean, and that's Devon. Because the shame and heartache of Devon finding out wouldn't ever be worth it. But knowing this moment, any moment can be far better with a single pill. Unfortunately, that feeling will always be there. So no, this is stupid, and he won't touch drugs again. Not even weed. The window. Oh! Oh my god! Okay. Okay. So, there's, there's a fucking claw man, claw hand. Holy Christ. At first, Cameron is only surprised. This is something he hasn't seen in months, not since October of last year, but still, he kind of hoped this would happen. This creature, this manifestation, is somehow connected to his abilities. He'd always thought it to be a mental illness. But now that he knows that there's something more to all of this, maybe it's a sign, a harbinger of sorts to, that might lead him to important visions. Still nothing, still something about it is especially unsettling this time. Something is wrong. 
something is different, and it's more than just the raincoat monster appearing. Raincoat monster! Oh god! Arches and half circles. There's an arch right there on the wall, you see it? There's an arch right there, connecting to what looks like Yoda's head. His train of thoughts cuts off as he notices a barely discernible movement from the creature. Aside from a handful of moments in the past that felt like glitches more than anything else, the creature never moved. It was always like a cardboard cutout. It's no longer cardboard, though. Just breathing. Oh! So if you look in the window that it seemed to come from, there's something there. I don't know. It looks like it's just plank of wood or something, but it's there, and it's got a little beastie holding the window, literally gesturing, this is the fucking window. What's happening? It's not thinking right. This thing isn't part of Echo. Cameron knows that. So why is it acting different, more alive, as if the town is amplifying it? Maybe it's just the setting, his nerves, the weed. But now he's realizing how strange it is that he's been so relieved to find out he's psychic. Doesn't he still have problems? It's not like all of those issues were just solved. Are those the voices of the dead, or something else? Are those ghosts or hallucinations? Is there a difference? Suddenly a whole new wave of anxiety washes over the canine. Just like that, he's not sure about anything anymore. He'd had such a beautiful, life-changing epiphany, and now... He looks up the road where Dev and Artie are, but they're not there. And Cameron stares, wondering what's real anymore. He looks back at the monster standing in that window... If it's a harbinger of thing for things important, he should go into that room. Otherwise, I'll just leave here knowing he's crazy, knowing he's on the verge of a fucking psychotic break. Oh, damn it, damn it, what am I doing? And then he's moving for the window, for that monster, the whispers growing and the distortions twisting. What the fuck? You're all the way back there? Oh, this is just a placeholder for up the road, okay. Devin watches his boyfriend in the distance carefully, feeling his anxiety come down a bit as Cameron seems to just stand there. So, uh, what's the deal, man? Hmm? You know what I'm talking about. What happened? Did he see some fucked up shit earlier? Because you seem really, really worried. For a moment, Devin is glad already cuts himself off. But then... Hey, what the fuck? Yeah! Artie is already running up the road towards his car. Devin looks to see a man standing next to the car, the hood up. Devin isn't sure what to do at first, either go to Cameron or to Ar or follow Artie. Cameron seems oblivious in the distance, which is probably for the best, but it doesn't and it doesn't look like the man is carrying any sort of weapon, so he decides his friend is gonna need help, so he runs after Artie. Well that explains where he goes, but wrong choice, motherfucker! Dev runs up to the car just as an old what? Oh no! An old weasel looking man headbutts Artie in the face? Oh fuck, son of a bitch! Artie stumbles and falls on his ass. Hey! Oh. Okay. Our first returning, confirmed returning character. And it had to be him! The weasel regards him coolly. Seemingly not bothered by the fact that he just used his own face as a battering ram. Hey. Dev doesn't know what to say, mostly because he doesn't know why the guy just did what he did. Meanwhile, Artie moans on the ground a paw to his forehead. At least give De gives Dev a starting point. You can't just fucking do that, man! What are you doing? Adjusting things. He shows off a pair of pliers, of course. Why? Why the fuck? Dev can hear his heart pounding in his ears as he sees a toolbox balanced on the bumper. Why? Give me the- Devin starts to uh, step forward to take the pliers from the man, but a flash of light blinds him. Ooh! Damn, holy criminoli. He looks less fucked up in this art style, but he still looks fucked up. Dev had never been hit before, not as an adult at least. His size usually deterred anyone from trying anything, and he normally didn't get into those kinds of situations anyway. 
Now this moment takes what feels like a long time for his brain to process. He stumbles on his feet, Paul's uselessly outstretched, trying to refocus when something explodes in his stomach that seems to expand like a balloon under his ribcage. The bear doubles over, doubles over in shock, feeling like a vacuum had opened up his torso before he falls to his knees. <laughs> the long, strained sound of agony seems to go on forever as his diaphragm refuses to work. Only now does he realize he'd been punched in the stomach as well, and while he's had the wind knocked out of him before, it's nothing like this. How was that, badass? Dev goes on droning in response, a small part of him considering that he might actually suffocate to death. Holy hell, man, what the fuck's your problem? Oh, you wanna know? Devin, still with his face toward the ground, only hears movement above him, that, but that's followed by a gasp from Marty. What the fuck? Oh, it's a gun. It's a gun. I have a problem with sick fucks like you dicking around in this place because you think it's funny. Dev is only now star starting to get his breath back, but, but, but his eyes are locked on the gun in his face. His insides turn to water, which has nothing to do with the punch. Where were you five years ago, huh? Back home with mommy and daddy, living in your middle class houses. Thought you'd come out and see what the crazy meth heads are all up to, how they all killed each other. The man adjusts his grip on the gun and Dev almost chokes with fear. Either the old man is going to shoot him or he's going to do it on accident. Is this still fun? Marty's rough breathing next to Devin is the only thing that lets the bear know that the cat is still there with him. Dude, listen, uh, we didn't mean... You listen, dude! I gave you assholes a whole fucking day to get the fuck out in here, but you're still here. Since you're so goddamn comfortable, hope you don't mind being stuck here for good! With that, the man turns away, sticking his gun down his pants before calmly collecting his tools, closing the toolbox, and... Walking off the road, straight through the sagebrush. Holy shit. It's a seven mile walk to the freeway. I suggest you leave the moment it gets cool. And that's friendly advice. There's much worse out here than me, you stupid fox! Marty bends over Devin, who slowly stumbles to his feet, hunched over, stomach aching far worse than his muzzle, which he wipes clean of blood. Fuck, man, what did he do? Art looks back to the car. Art looks back to the car, and even from here, Dev can see wiring sticking out from the hood. I can't fucking believe this! Hang on, I'm getting Cam. Alright, man. I'll see if this thing is even worth coming back for. Devin jogs up the road, grunting with each step, each one sending a jolt through his stomach. While the weasel hadn't moved in this direction, Dev isn't taking chances. He also needs to make sure the coyote is... Cameron! 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 He shouldn't be panicking, not yet, but the feeling is starting up again. Having a gun pointed... And after having a gun pointed in his face... Cameron! No answer. Dev heaves for air, looking around, looking around until... He sees a flash of flannel through, the, through a motel window. He's next to it in a second, unable to fit, so he pries back boards with his bare paws. And he pushes through and tumbles into a dark, bla thick blackness. And... Don't say to be continued. You motherfucker! After all this shit this update put me through, you're gonna fucking god motherfucker! Okay, okay, okay. So, in this update... I'm more mad at the guy who wasn't holding a gun to the main characters. That makes no sense, right? Okay, so in all seriousness, we got a return of our first character from Echo. And of course, it's not friendly. I want to make clear, it isn't that I think it's bad as a story. It's frustrating. And given the fact that we have an audience sympathetic character... Uh, uh, or uh, like an audience identifying figure in, in, in Dev, 
who is getting frustrated. Granted, not as much as I was, but he was still getting exasperated with everything that was going on. I think it's fair to say that it was intentionally frustrating. That was the point. They had a whole CG where two guys are laughing and fucking going on. Meanwhile, fucking devs in the background being pissed. So unless they're trying to make Devin seem like the heel, then yeah, I think it's right to be frustrated with the characters right now. As far as what the fuck with the rainbow, rainbow monster, the raincoat monster in the motel, what the fuck's gonna happen there? Um, they gotta get the fuck out of there before goddamn shot in the face, whatever. Uh, this was an update setting up some stuff, not just like events, but also character interaction. Uh, unfortunately, it was a lot of character interaction that was fucking frustrating as hell, but it has its place in narratives. So there you go. Fuck Artie. <laughs> and yeah, I don't, I'm not scared of these people being stuck in this town right now because the town itself has only really done a couple of things granted a couple of crazy ass things but like i'm more fuck i want them to get the fuck out of the town because they're fucking the way they're acting <laughs> more than anything but anyway anyway no story is finished being told until it's done and even after that there's always the temptation to go back uh and this is only the point three update so there's a lot of shit left to go uh with that being said, thank you all for watching. What do you think of this update? You let me know in the comments. Uh, sorry if I was annoying you with my being mad at things that are trying to be infuriating. Um, whatever. <laughs> I don't apologize. Because uh, I, I wouldn't plan it up at all. I was seriously getting pissed. I'm going to go play some Civ and try to calm down. Turn my brain off for a little bit. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you all later. Bye.